Well, hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Pinterest, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, um, a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited to be sharing with you all tonight. My plan for tonight is to uh, run through all my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then do a quick uh, focus on first grade where I give you a little bit more in-depth talking about those uh, specific um, processes and uh, scaffolding and all the stuff that I, that goes into that lesson. So that's my plan for tonight. Um, before I get there, I want to just hit a couple quick things that a lot of times people will ask about, so I thought I'd hit those uh, before we get started. So... Um, and also I'm trying out some new technology this year, so if, if it works, uh, great. If it doesn't work, I'm really sorry. I'm trying to make it better. Um, but anyway, uh, so if you have any glitches, please like shoot me a comment that says like, I can't hear you or I can't see you or there's something going on. Anyway, um, so a couple quick things. Um, if you are interested in any of the books or puppets or resources or anything that I talk about in the video tonight, um, I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to like the stuff I talk about, the links. Um, so if I talk about the links page, you can go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. If you click on the video tab, there should be a drop down where you can hit uh, Musical Mondays 2021, 2022, and you can go to a page with all those links. Or if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or, or uh, or you're on a podcast, if you go to like the caption for this video, there's a direct link if you just want to take that. But that's there if you want it. Um, I also have a Facebook group, um, Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. If you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you want to know more about resources, if you want to ask a community that you know will give you uh, great answers and advice, uh, join us and uh, ask those questions. See what people are talking about. Um, and let's make this less of a like me talking to a computer and more of like all of us together <laughs> in a community. It's just online. Um, oh, and one more thing. So uh, I am doing some in-person workshops the next couple weekends. So if you're around, I'd love for you to join us. Um, my weekend or this weekend, I'm going to be in Chicago um, with the Greater Chicago Earth Chapter at uh, Thomas Edison Elementary in Morton Grove, Illinois, just on the sort of the north side of the city. So if you're around, we'd love to have you there. Um, you can get details for any of these workshops if you go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org and hit the About Me section. Or if you go to my Facebook page, you can find info there too. Uh, the following weekend on September 25th, I'm going to be in St. Louis at Ellisville Elementary in Ellisville, Missouri with uh, the St. Louis Orf chapter. We'd love to have you there. Um, or the following weekend, October 2nd, I'll be in Milwaukee with the Greater Milwaukee Orf chapter. That's going to be at Meadowview Elementary in Oconomowoc. I think I'm saying that right? Oconomowoc. Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Um, I, I've never heard anyone actually say that out loud, <laughs> at least in the last couple weeks, so I'm not sure if that's right or not. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be there with the Greater Milwaukee Orf chapter, and if you're going to be in any of those places, we would love for you to join us for a workshop. And like I said, details are on my website, makemomentsmatter.org. Uh, if you go to the About Me section, or you can check me out on Facebook or send me a message or whatever, and I'd love to give you more details. Okay. One more just random thing. So uh, a couple, a week or so ago, I, I did a lot, or I did a, um, a story on Facebook and Instagram saying, hey, I have like songs for so many transitions in my room. I've got a coming in song. I've got a leaving song. I've got a go find your seating chart song. I've got a make a circle song. And I like, uh, I divide up all my classes um, into four teams. And I do that for a lot of reasons, um, mostly classroom management, but like, um, the, the four teams, so like if I have a, my one homeroom, they'll be divided into four, and the teams are named Strings, Percussion, Woodwinds, and Brass. I call them the families. You go find your family, sit with your family. We're going to work in our families today. And that's so that like if I want to do like um, a folk song with that has like a folk dance, I can say like, okay, Strings and Percussion on this side, Woodwinds and Brass over here, or you need to find a partner, and your partner needs to be in a different family, or whatever. It's just a lot of classroom management stuff. If I want to do centers, I already have four groups that I can just break in half, and then I'll have eight groups that can move around through centers. It's just really helpful for classroom management, right? I actually have a whole blog post about that and some of the things I do and why I do it. It's, it's especially great this year with COVID. Like if you're having students like put away materials or get out materials, like in, in this week, um, I had a couple grades going to get whiteboards and dry erase markers and all sorts of stuff like that. And I don't want everybody like bunching up all together. I want to try and keep kids separated as much as possible. So instead of saying, okay, everyone go put your stuff away, which I don't think I would have done 
in previous years, but especially with COVID, um, I don't say that. Um, so I say like, okay, strings, go put your materials away. And then once they've cleared out a little bit, all right, percussion family, you can go put your stuff away. Anyway, all that to say, a week or so ago, I did um, this, this uh, story saying like, hey, I need a transition song to get kids into these families. And so many of you flooded me with, well, why don't you just do we are family? And I was like, no, I can't, I can't do that because I, I will have that song as an earworm stuck in my head for like, if I have to do it two or one or two times a day for the next like 20 years, I, I'll never get that song out of my head. So I can't do that. So I was asking like, what are some folk songs that you think I could like take or repurpose, change the words, blah, blah, blah. And some of you had some really great ideas. Some of you even like wrote out, you're like, here's what I would do with like the full lyrics. Thank you. Um, and I've tried a couple of them. I'm like beta testing several of them. The one that I tried today that I wanted to share, in case any of you do this sort of same thing, um, is if you know the song Head and Shoulders, but not, not head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, um, but the one that goes, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, baby, one, two, three. And then they, they, you can do different versions of like, kick the bucket, baby, one, two, three. Oh, what's another one that I've heard before? Um, I don't know. Walk around, baby, one, two, three. I mean, you can change the words to anything. So I've been trying, I've been beta testing. Um, find your families, baby, one, two, three. Find your families, baby, one, two, three. Three, find your family, find your family, find your family, and have a seat. And that's <laughs> worked really well. And that's a song that doesn't stay in my head for all day. So great. Um, and <laughs> it seems to work out well. And on the floor, I have uh, long strips of Velcro. All The teams are color-coded. Um, they're color-coded to match the big... I don't know if you have the uh, Bomar, I think it's the brand, these like big, huge cardboard, like reinforced cardboard cutouts that are prop I I've had in my room. I'm pretty sure they're from like the 60s. I don't know. But these like large posters of instruments that I think used to be on a lot of our walls, maybe still are. And um, the colors for those were strings were always blue, woodwinds were yellow, brass was red, and percussion was green. So I use those colors to color code basically everything. And on the floor of my room, I have a long strip of Velcro that's blue, one that's green, one that's yellow, one that's red. And so when I sing, find your family, they have to go and sit on that colorful line that matches their family. Anyway, that's the folk song I'm going to try and use. Um, I hope it works. <laughs> I'm really excited about it, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to, beta test that and let you know how that goes <laughs> and if you think that's a great folk song awesome if you have another one that you think would also work please shoot me a message and let me know um, i would be so delighted to try out multiple other options and um, see see what works best okay that's the extent of my like housekeeping stuff so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to run through um all my lessons, kindergarten through fifth grade, I'm going to omit first grade as I like do the quick rundown because I'm really just sort of going to like give a rundown, tell you like this is what I'm doing in the order I'm doing it. Maybe jump in a little in a few places where like I might want to expound upon things. And then I'm going to try to get to first grade where I'm going to give a lot more detail and sort of walk you through the process and the scaffolding and all of that. Um, okay, cool. Someone <laughs> just commented on Facebook and there had been no <laughs> so far which is fine fine you don't feel obligated to say anything but i was like worried that this, the feed wasn't working so thanks destiny for letting me know that you can hear and see me because now i know that like hey it's it's working okay so uh this is my uh what i'm sharing with you today is my fourth week seeing students um and i see them twice a week for a half an hour and so uh so like the, you're going to see lessons one and two for the week. Each one is a half an hour long. Um, I know everybody's doing sort of different things, but hopefully even if you're like, I'm an hour long class or I'm a 30 minute class or I'm a 40 minute class. I'm a, I used to be a 25 minute class because I don't know, I guess my principal wanted to like really mess with my head so that every timing was off. Um, but I know all of us are in different places with different classes, but hopefully you might be able to use some of the things that you hear and use them in your class or use them in the future take a steal an idea hopefully uh, there's something here that's helpful but anyway seeing classes twice a week for a half an hour um, where I switch off with a PE teacher so kindergarten they come in every week for the last four weeks you've heard me say we do our choo-choo train song and they come in they follow me we'd like do a train around the room and in the last class or the last couple classes I've gone through where like they have to follow me and I've done like it, the first couple weeks were just circles 
right? So they would learn the song, they learned the process, they understood how it worked. And then we'd start doing like weird patterns. We would like follow lines or we would do take a corner or whatever. Um, and then uh, what we've ended up doing in the last class is like the train would run into itself. So like I would intentionally lead us through um, and like run into the back of the train or whatever. And the, oh, they think that's hilarious. Um, and so we did that again in this lesson, the first lesson of the week, um, which they just laughed and thought that was so much fun. In the previous lesson, we did a song from um, this book, SOS, Songs of the Sea. This is by Lynn Kleiner, um, who is uh, behind Music Rhapsody. If you're uh, familiar with Music Rhapsody, um, which is a company and a website and just a, uh, it, amazing. So uh, it, in Songs of the Sea, there's a song called Sandy Sand, and we take our egg shakers and dance around and move with that. Last week, I talked about how we did that, so I'm not going to run into that today. But um, in this lesson, we sort of take it and just do it one more time because the kids love it so much and it uses egg shakers and it's fun and it's quick. And since they already know the process and everything behind it, I don't have to like reteach anything. So I just run the lesson with, or I, I run the song with them. So they get another chance of the egg shakers. So they have more fun with it. Um, and they, they are very appreciative of that. But once we're done with that, once we've done the Sandy Sand song before we put away, I, I say like, Ooh, can we shake fast? Can we shake slow? Can we shake loud? Can we shake soft? Can we shake, high can we shake oh what's the opposite of high oh low yeah can we shake low can we shake um uh with two hands can we shake with one so i've, I've started to try and do like opposites or things that are different so they get a little bit of uh comparison <clears throat> with the egg shakers um but it's fun to fun to play with the egg shakers a little bit then uh, we, in the last couple weeks, I've also talked about we've been meeting one friend at a time. Uh, we met Peter the Rabbit in the first week who taught us about speaking voice. <clears throat> then he taught us a poem that goes, speaking voice is the best. It's better than all the rest. And then the following week, Flitter the butterfly came out and taught us a poem about, uh, about whisper voice that goes, whisper voice is the best. It's better than all the rest. Well, today, Snowy the owl, who is sitting up on a perch, um, she flies down, <clears throat> woo, and she gets to meet the kindergartners, who, the kindergartners, who, Miss Peterson's kindergarten class, who, uh, the Miss Peterson's kindergarten class, who, yeah, Miss Peterson's kindergarten class, who, Mr. Rao, in owl language, who means okay. So I'm saying, okay, that's what we did. Oh, great. So we met the kindergarten class, who, Miss Peterson's kindergarten class. Who? No, I'm saying I, I was saying we did it. Oh, sorry. Okay. And actually, that's what one of the things that Snowy, like Snowy, I say like Snowy, do you want to meet the kindergartners? And she goes, who? And I go, Miss Peterson's class. Who? And I say Miss Peterson's class. She's like, who means yes? So because we talk about like dogs say bark and or roof, 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 and cows go moo and whatever, and owls go whoo. And so anyway, Snowy flies down. She teaches them about singing voice. Where can they use singing voice? How do they use singing voice? If you want to know more about this process, I did a whole video about the four voices using puppets, um, which you can go and watch the whole process front to back. Um, but she does that, and then she sings uh, her own song, which, which did you write it? Yes, I wrote it last night with my friend Barry the Bat. We wrote it just last night. It's brand new. No one's ever heard it before. And how does it go? Singing voice is the best. It's better than all the rest, which all the kids think is hilarious because they know that that's the poem that Peter taught them and how dare Snowy co-opt this poem and use it for her own. And so anyway, um, I, I say, you know, Snowy, I think I've heard that poem before. No, it's brand new. I wrote it last night with my friend Barry the Bat. Did I tell you about Barry? We're both nocturnal. Anyway, I wrote it as brand new. It goes, singing voice is the best. It's better than all the rest. And I go, no, I'm pretty sure that Peter taught us that. And Peter said it goes, speaking voice is the no. That's not how it goes. It goes, singing voice is the best. It's better than all the rest. Oh, and then Flitter taught us a poem. It sounds very similar to your song. And uh, she said hers goes, whisper voice is the no. That's not right. It goes, singing. So Snow Snowy loves to interrupt. All my puppets are a little bit cheeky like that because I don't know, it's, it's fun to be sassy with puppets. So anyway, uh, she interrupts and this is a, a the, the brand of puppets I use is called Folk Manus. Um, I don't use them exclusively, but pretty much because these are <laughs> really nice puppets. They're very intricate and fun um, and they last. They're, they're super 
uh, well made. Um, so like Snowy, um, one of the, so a couple of cool things about her. So I can move her wings, I can manipulate her wings, right? Um, there's a little bit of Velcro stitch into her wings. So if I want her wings to stay closed, that you can't, you could do that. Um, there's a little like joystick inside so that I can move her head if I want, which is fun because then the kids don't realize. And, and also like, if you get really good at this, you can manipulate just a little bit. It can move just a little and, um, so she can get very realistic. It's pretty fun. Anyway, so um, we, uh, Snowy comes out. We sing the song. And then Snowy flies to each kid. And she goes, who are you? And they get to sing their name. They get to say, I am David. And she goes, great job. Or sometimes they just sing, David. I'm not trying to get them to use sentences or anything if they don't want. I'm just wanting them to use their singing voice. So um, she says, who are you? And they go, David. And she goes, high five. And they can give her a high five or a, fi or a fist bump or whatever you want to give, have the kids get for doing a great job. Anyway, so Snowy goes around to each kid um, and sings, who are you? And they get to sing back and it's very exciting. Um, and of course, Snowy and I preview this all for kids. Like I show them like what it looks like. Like I, she does it with me. Who are you? And I go, Mr. Rao. She goes, fist bump. You know, we, I, like I, I do it with Snowy three or four times so they know what to expect. Because this is like the first time I'm asking them to sing a solo in front of other people, even if really they're only singing it to Snowy, who's like right down at their level. Um, it, it's still a little scary, so I just want them to know the process, know exactly what the Snowy's going to ask them to do, so they know exactly how it's going to go. Um, and and also one of the cool things about puppets is you know if kids sometimes they don't want to sing a solo, they don't want to sing in front of other people. For some reason, puppets like break down those barriers in some instances, and Snowy's one of them. Um, and because so, she's so soft and fluffy, when she's down on their level, she they have lots of fun with her, and she's you know silly and whatever. So a lot of times kids. I find will like sing for a puppet even if they won't sing for me, which I don't know hurts my feelings a little bit. <laughs> you, you've known this puppet for what twenty seconds, and at, technically the puppet is an extension of me. But whatever, I'm okay with it as long as the kid is singing and I can see that and I know that they're engaging. That's that's fine. So um, anyway, so Snowy comes in and does that, and that's basically the end of our time. Uh, in the next lesson, um, they come in. I say we're doing choo choo train for the last time. Oh, no. And next time when you come in, we're going to do something different. So we do choo-choo train. We go around. We run into the train. We have a lot of fun. Um, and then I sort of take the train, and the train at the end of our song, it leads us to the door, so it looks like we're about to leave, like we're going out. And I say, oh, great. Now turn around and face the room. It doesn't look like we're going out. It looks like we're coming in. Because remember, I said next time when you come in, we're going to do something different. And here's what we're going to do. And these last couple weeks, I've sung our Come and Make a Circle song. Um, and so I just say, next time when you come in, I'm going to be at the door with my ukulele singing, come and make a circle. And you just got to come and make a circle. That's all you're going to, it's just that easy. So you're just going to come in. So instead of doing choo-choo train, you're just going to come in all by yourself. Let's practice. So we do, and they make a circle and, um, and it goes hopefully well. <laughs> Um, and then um, every day that they're in there, I've been starting, I guess I didn't mention this last time, but um, I've been saying like, where is David? Here I am. There you are. Where is Jennifer? Here I am. There you are. And I get to say each kid's name and they say, here I am. And so this time we start doing it, um, we sing it. Where is David? Here I am. There you are. Where is Jose? Here I am. There you are. You know, whatever. Um, and again, I'm not, this is eventually going to morph into like, hello, David. Hello, Mr. Ralph. Hello, whatever. But um, the thing I like about it is like it, it, it's like a slow progression. They've, they've done the speaking version. It helps me like actually put names to faces. Where is Daniel? Here I am. There you are. Um, and so it's a sort of back and forth. And eventually it's going to switch to a different hello song. But for now, this is what it is. Um, we talk about all the friends that we've met. Um, we, we go to like seating chart spots. We talk about all the friends we've met. We met Peter who told about speaking voice. We meet Flitter who talks about whisper voice. Snowy who talks about singing voice. And I say, friends, today I have a new, a, a new person for you to meet. And um, I'm really excited for you to meet him. He's such a great friend, a really nice, really nice friend. You know, I only bring my nicest friends in. Um, but I just, I have to warn you, sometimes he gets a little excited, like too excited. Like, have you ever met somebody who gets like so excited that they're like, oh my gosh, let me tell you, at the time I'm going to go to my grandma. You know, like they get really excited and they like lose control of their emotions and like their, their voice a little bit. 
well this he sort of does that sometimes um and anyway i just wanted you to know that that like he gets a little he'll probably just be so excited to see you he might lose control of his um voice and his emotions for just a second but don't worry he's very very nice oh and i should probably also tell you um he's a bear so anyway okay oh, let me go get him all right grizzly grizzly yes um, so I need, we're going to come meet the kindergarten. Oh yes, the kindergarten. I'm so excited. No, Grizzly, remember, you need to be, you need to be in control. Can you be in control? Oh yes, I can be in control. Okay, great. So you're not going to do anything that's too loud or, or that might, might startle them. No, no, I won't do that. Okay, great. So anyway, this is my friend Grizzly and Grizzly is a bear. I'm a bear. I'm so excited to see everyone. I'm so glad you're here. And so like he right away lose a little control and he gets to tell them about their shouting voice, which is so exciting. Um, and he gets to be very loud and they love that. And he, again, you can watch the whole video if you want to watch, see the process of like how I do all of this um, and, and all the little intricacies of like the storytelling or whatever. But he eventually gets, he gets permission from me to one time do his poem, which is the same poem that everyone else has done, but his shouting voice is the best. Um, along in the way, Grizzly gets to teach him about where can you use your shouting voice. Where are you allowed to use your shouting voice? Outside. Mm -hmm. Where else? Mm -hmm. In the gym, if I have my PE teacher's permission. Mm -hmm. And where else? Can you use it in the classroom? Mm -mm. Can you use it in the hallway? Mm -mm. Shouting voice is loud. It's too loud for inside. Is there ever a time when you can use your shouting voice inside? Only in an emergency. Okay, so like if I really needed my shoes ties, is that an emergency? Mm -mm. If I want to get my teacher's attention, is that an emergency? Mm -mm. If my best friend won't give me their iPad and I really want to use it, is that an emergency? Mm -mm. An emergency is when you need help or if your friend or you are in danger, that's when you, that's an emergency. So we talk a little bit about that. So like, when is it appropriate? When is it not? I think my kindergarten teachers like that I use examples of like, if I need my shoot, <laughs> should I be shouting? And they say no. Um, anyway, so Grizzly comes out, he teaches them that voice. And then I found this year my new favorite book, which I am so excited to share. Um, and it's a, it's such a delightful book. It's called Leave Me Alone by Vera Broskel. Um, and I just love it so much. So anyway, um, let me just share just a couple of pages. Um, you should go out and buy it right now. It is so amazing. Okay. Once there was an old woman. She lived in a small village in a small house with a very big family. Look at the old woman's face. She's like not excited. Winter was coming. That means she that meant she had some very important knitting to do, but it wasn't getting done. Her grandchildren were very curious about her knitting. Were you supposed to hit the ball with a stick? Could you eat it? Could you make your brother eat it? And the illustrations here are just amazing. I love them. Why did the ball get smaller and smaller as you chased it? The old woman was at the end of her rope. And again, I just, I just love these illustrations. They make me so happy. So she made her bed as neatly as she could. She swept the floorboards until they more or less shone. She drank tea from her samovar. She packed up her things in a big sack. And as she left, she shouted back, Leave me alone! So delightful. The old woman walked through the deep, dark forest. She made a fire so that she could see what she was doing. Then she sat down and began to knit. The bear family was very curious about the light from her fire and about what she might taste like. Oh my goodness. Leave me alone, the old woman shouted. I'm not actually shouting because I'm afraid my microphone would blow out your speaker, so I'm not going to do that. But in my classroom, I shut off my personal microphone and I do shout. But they didn't listen because bears don't speak English. So she picked up her sack and left. And this is when I say to my, um, to my class, I say, do you see how these words are so much bigger than other, the other parts of the story? Hey, when you see this word next time, the leave me alone, could you shout that with me when we get there next time? If, if there's another time, there might be. So if you see those big words, you get to say it with me. The old woman climbed up the mountainside. It was cold. So she found a small sheltered place. Then she sat down and began to knit. The mountain goats were excited to have a visitor, especially one that brought snacks. Do you see what, what, do you see what the mountain goats are eating? And the kids are like, they're eating the yarn. I'm like, they are, they're eating the yarn. How silly. Leave me alone. 
down, the old woman shouted. But the goats were too busy fighting over the red ones, which they all agreed were the tastiest. So she picked up her sack and left. The old woman climbed higher and higher up the mountain. She reached the top and climbed onto the moon. It's at this point that I say to the kids, I'm like, wait, at the, there, there could be an old woman who knits. <clears throat> there could be an old woman who knits and goes out into the forest or who meets mountain goats. But can an old woman really climb onto the, the moon? And they're like, no. I'm like, so is this is like a real story or is it silly? I'm like, it's silly. Anyway, she gets on the moon. There are little green men who <laughs> want to, uh, like, uh, they want to scan her with their handheld scanners. Um, and she yells at them to leave her alone. But the little green moon men couldn't hear her because they don't have ears. Love that part. Um, so then she, <laughs> she picks up her sacks and left through a wormhole. And she goes into the void where it is very quiet. And she finishes her knitting. <laughs> and she feels lonely. And so then she takes all of her knitting and she uh, climbs through a wormhole again. Well, first she cleans up, which I really appreciate. <laughs> she cleans up. She has some more tea. And then she climbs through the wormhole. And she gets back to um, her family. And she has knitted them all of her grandchildren's sweaters for the winter. It is like the most darling book. And kids get to use their shouting voice. So I'm like, yes, it's perfect. It like fits right <laughs> Anyway, I love it so much. I'm so glad I got to share that with all tonight. Um, go and get <laughs> go. And you don't have to buy it on Barnes & Noble. I actually got mine uh, from a place called Better World Books. There are a lot of used book websites. This one is a discard from the Salinas Public Library. I don't care. It's in great condition. It has that library type plastic on the front. It's great condition. So anyway, go get it. It's a great book. Uh, if you want to get it brand new on Amazon, go for it. You might be able to get it through interlibrary loan. I don't know. But you don't have to buy it from Amazon if you don't want. You can find it usually used. Okay, I'm coming back to first grade in a minute. Second grade, uh, they come in. I talked last week about how we do the song Dippy Doo. Um, so we came, we came in, we do that. I sang, where is Jeremy? Here I am. There you are. Same as K1 and 2. I sort of do that same procedure for all of them. Um, and then we take um, bags of sticks and leaves. And these leaves here I can sort of show you. Um, up on the whiteboard, on the class whiteboard, I'll show you. I put these leaves out on the board, right, so there's like a visual that kids can see. And then I have uh, magnetic sticks. These are not the magnetic ones. Okay, so cool. Ooh, neither of these. All right, well, anyway, so I <laughs> have magnetic sticks. Um, you could also just use a, um, a dry erase marker, but I like put them up on the board so kids can see them a little bit better. But what kids are doing is in front of them, out of the baggie come these, ba these leaves and some sticks. And we do basically stick notation versions of uh, quarter notes and eighth notes. And um, we go through and we talk about like words that might match. So like uh, we say like walk, walk, running, walk would be like uh, ta, 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 di, ta. We do different patterns. I give kids examples of like food words. I say like pie, pie, pizza, pie. And then we take that and we do the stick notation versions of that. Um, and so then I let them come up with some things. I let them come up with two or one sound words that we can replace with, um, you know, food or animals or whatever you want um, that help them sort of get that idea of the concept. At this point, I'm just trying to get them to make the connection between like um, that, that icon, that icon, the iconic notation of the stick notation, and then also the, the sounds that they hear, patterns of sounds. I'm trying to get them to listen for and differentiate between two sounds and one sounds or no sound, and then f have a way to show that with icons in front of them. They're not drawing notes, they're just using sticks, um, but it's, it's a way to sort of get, like make that connection before we move on to actual notation. And usually that's all the time we have in that specific class. The next time they come, um, we do our circle, we do uh, Dippy Doo as an entrance, we do Charlie Over the Ocean, and then, and oh my gosh, I'm going to see if my technology works for this. I'm worried it's not going to. <laughs> Again, I'm trying new things this year. I'm trying. Um, and then we go to the Note Neighborhood, and I hope you can see this. And Facebook, if the sound cuts out, please let me know. <laughs> but anyway, we go to the Note Neighborhood, um, and we get to review... Um, some of the things that we've done in previous years. Instagram, I'm going to try and make this work. So let's see if this works. Okay, let's see. Can you see? Yes, no neighborhood. All right, so what we do in this, um, it's sort of like a review. And and we just go through. Facebook, if you can see this, if someone could like say like, hey, I could see that, that'd be cool. 
because I don't know if this is working. Um, we go through, and so with the Note Neighborhood, this is something I made years and years and years, well, in 2006, apparently, 2016, apparently. Um, and it, it goes through, it basically gives a story for each of the notes. Um, and it, so like this one there, the, this is a review. In, last year we did this, so this is like just a review. So like in every Note Neighborhood story, there's like the... Um, the introducing one where like it gives them the concept for the first time they see it, they talk about it. And then there's the one, the, the story that practices it. So this is the practice. Like they already know how it works and this is like giving them um, a chance to review in this new year. So he says like, hi friends, I'm so glad you could join us. We're back in the Note neighborhood. Dion and I, Dion and I decided to meet at the park for there's a pond, we're gonna feed the ducks. So like they come to the park and it's exciting and here comes Dion and they make toddy. Um, I also have a version of this with like ta ta ti ti ta if you use that language instead. Um, and so they go down, but then on their way to the pond, oh no, the sassy half note shows up. Hello, is somebody there? And so they, to, to avoid her, they like they <laughs> climb up the tree um, and she shows up. She's like, man, I thought I saw them around, right? So anyway, so they're up in the tree, which is great. And they um, then they like walk out a little bit further and you can hopefully see this. The reason I'm clicking through, like this is just a review and in a second they're gonna make a rhythm pattern. It's just giving a little story to it so that they like have a, a sort of a hook for the lesson. So they um, they they get to read patterns, ta, 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 di, ta, which is what I use with, cause I use ta, um, And then they do ta, di, ta, ta, di, ta. So they just get to practice. Um, and then it, it just slowly gets more difficult. Um, a quarter rest shows up, and so they do uh, patterns with a rest in it. Um, and then more patterns, and then, oh my gosh, let's use two branches, so longer patterns. So then at this point I can review like, uh, you start on the top left and you go all the way across and then you jump down like you're reading a book and then you go to the next line and you go to the, and you know, read across. So it's just like sort of reviewing like how the process works. It gets slightly more difficult. And then, oh my gosh, what a fun idea. Ta decides to jump up and hang from the branch upside down. So then they can sort of see like notes upside down. The, the rhythm is exactly the same. It just looks different. And so they get to go through and read and we read and then we do two lines. Oh my gosh, we're like some are upside down and some are right side up. And so it goes through and, and towards the end it says like, hey, there's this thing called a staff. We're not really using it yet. But like if you see the notes flipped upside down, don't be surprised because you know what they are. They just look a little different, right? Um, and so then we go on to the next part. Uh, we're going to climb down, but hey, before we do, oh wait, I think I skipped a, uh, no, I didn't skip a page. Uh, before we do, hey, uh, ooh, yeah, I guess I did skip a page. There's a page in here somewhere that has kids go through and identify uh, the vocabulary word for a, for a note. So like uh, quarter note, eighth notes, it gives them a chance to actually see that vocabulary. And that's when we like go in the room and like look at the vocabulary wall so they can actually see it up on the wall. Okay, and then, then like we're out of time. <laughs> and so uh, that that's just a chance for, ooh, sorry, I don't know what's happening, Instagram, sorry. Um, it, it gives them a chance to see and uh, interface with the notes. It's good practice and also it lets them um, see the notes in a new way. So like the upside down note thing, it helps them find the vocabulary. It's just like a good refresher. And so um, it's like our, like I said, it's a practice page. Each note neighborhood story comes with like an introduction and a practice. So like they get, you, you get more out of the resource. You're not just like, here's what it is, the end. It's like, here's what it is and here's um, another way to interface with it. So you get more out of it. Okay, third grade they come in and we do uh, the song that I talked about last time, Johnny Get Your Hair Cut. It's just sort of an introduction song. And this one we do, there's there's a B section where we add in a little bit of solfege echo. So it's just like four beat patterns were. Um, so, 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 me, me, me. And it's so, so, me, me, me. So, me, do, so, me, do. And so the B section of the song, which you could do this with any song, um, is, just, is just echoing back and forth with solfege. So it's just adding a B section so that we can do a little bit of practice. In previous weeks, it was the B section was, and they would just echo back and forth with rhythm patterns. But now we're doing a solfege, and I'm doing the solfege syllables that they have done in the previous year. We've not added anything new, quite yet. Then we do um, sort of our own version. So like the second graders actually had literal sticks. What my third graders do, and what I think you're gonna see the fifth graders do is pull out whiteboards and they're gonna do stick notation. 
just with whiteboards. And so the reason I'm doing that is I, I say to them like, you know what really, if you're really going fast, you really wanna be composing a lot, what really takes a long time is the ovals, the note heads. And so we're just gonna leave those off. And I bet you'll still understand, you know, what things are. It really just means that like I can do more with actually the arranging, moving, and changing of the notes, like playing around with the rhythms themselves. And I don't have kids who are sitting fixating on making coloring in note heads over and over. I'd rather them work with the concept and like do the note head thing later. I, I care less about that than I do them actually understanding note values. <laughs> so um, so we do no, we do stick notation instead of standard notation just so it's a little bit quicker, the process is quicker. We're getting through what they actually need to know. So we do that and that takes basically the rest of the time. The kids come in for our second lesson of the week and we start um, tidy-o, which is an older folk song. Pass one window, tidy-o. Pass two windows, tidy-o. Pass three windows, tidy-o. Jingle at the window, tidy-o. And I, <laughs> I can tell them this crazy story about, um, well, I don't, it's not a story. I say, has anyone ever been to one of those restaurants where you have to drive around and get your food out of a window? It's, it's a, a place where food is fast, made fast. Oh, fast food. Sorry, that's what I mean. That's fast food. Yeah, and then they have these windows where you don't drive, like, actually, you actually drive around the store, but you get your food at a window. It's called a drive around. Oh, wait, no. It's called a um, drive next to, no, it's a oh, drive through. Drive through. Yes, that's what it's called. Anyway, have you been to a restaurant that has one drive through window, and we name a couple? Two drive through windows? We name a couple. Have you been to one that has three windows in it? And like hardly, maybe some of them are like, I went to a really busy McDonald's in Chicago and they had three, I don't know. So, um, but we talk about that and I say, well, if you had the three ones, what would they be for? Maybe the first one would be to pay and the second would be for drinks and the third one would be for food. Or maybe um, the first one could be to pay and the second one would be for normal food and the third one would be for kids' food. I don't know. But in the song there's, pass one window, tidy-o, pass two windows, tidy-o, pass three windows, tidy-o. I, I take the time to like talk through this whole story, just like to get, uh, it's to make it more of a conversation, to bring out kids talking and thinking about um, <clears throat> what, you know, think about what could those three windows be for, what would it be for, to sort of cement then then that idea of uh, past the windows. And then in the song it goes, jingle out the window, tidy yo, and I go, maybe you don't have um, a credit card, you don't have any paper money to pay, maybe you have to pay with, with coins, right? Like uh, quarters or uh, nickels or um, dimes, or maybe you're paying with uh, galleons, right? Okay, this is just like a bogus, I don't remember where Chuck E. G's when I got this. Um, so anyway, so it's just fun to like uh, make that another element of the song. Jingle out the window, tidy. Or maybe the jingling is the change that you're trying to pay with, you know? So it's just giving, like again, more context to the story. And then we like, um, <clears throat> we go through and we learn a couple little motions that go with it. In following weeks, we're gonna uh, add a little folk song. And then we grab whiteboards, we do rhythm scramble, where I have, I give them rhythms to do and they have to write it out in stick notation real fast. Fourth grade is just starting to get sort of boring because, well not boring for me, like it's, <laughs> it's good lessons, but like boring for me to tell you about because we're starting to get ready for a concert. Um, so every year we do the, the Veterans Day concert <clears throat> on Veterans Day or close to Veterans Day. This year it's actually on Veterans Day. Um, it's like a tradition apparently that's been around for thousands of years, so David, don't mess with it. But I might change that sometime. Anyway, so um, the first wit lesson of the week, we, uh, we've we already done Farmer's Dairy Key, so we just do it one more time for maybe five, ten minutes. Just a fun little song with a little game in there, <clears throat> which I talked about in a previous week. And then we start um, a song that I fell in love with on my third year teaching. Um, it's called um, The Voice of... <clears throat> I want to say it's called The Voice of America, but I don't actually think that's what it's called. I think it's actually called America the Free. It's in the Silver Burdette, um book series. It's in um, Activate <clears throat> from like 2011 or something. Um, but it's this little song goes, I am the voice of America. I am freedom's song. I am the wings of an eagle. I am proud and strong. And I just like it because there's like a little um, bridge that goes, I can be a doctor, I can be an artist, I can be a banker, freedom song. It's like, and you can insert other occupations if you want. Um, it's just, it's a fun little song. It's super short, it's easy for them to learn. And so it's gonna be one of the songs we do in our concert. But learning basically almost the whole song takes the rest of that day. Um, the next time they come back, we finish Voice of America or America the Free, whatever it's actually called, I don't know. I've always called it Voice of America. 
because that's like the first line. Anyway, fun song. And then we start the 15 FD United States, which I have to admit I'm a fan of. I didn't learn it in elementary school, so maybe if I had learned it in elementary school, I wouldn't like it. But I, I, I like it. I've never, I, I didn't learn it until I started teaching it. And in this lesson, we get, and I play piano, so I, I like doing it. It's fun for me um, to be able to, to jump on the piano and do some of the accompaniment stuff and gradually release a, a way to the kids. So like, you know, we learn by echoing. I put the words up on the on the board on the screen and we learn and then we go through and then I, I slowly give them more and more to do on their own where I'm, I'm singing like not really as many examples where I'm playing more on the piano. I'm doing more, I'm doing more accompaniment slowly working that in so they're getting more and more and it's just it's a fun it's a fun process for me i like that uh, but we get we do the intro the 50 nifty united states bum, 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 da, 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 da. we get through all that and then we also get through all the way alabama to indiana in this first lesson and then in the next lesson we learn more okay and then fifth grade they come in the first thing i do is hand them a whiteboard marker and they get an eraser and they get a whiteboard we go and we do like five to ten minutes of we we done stick notation in the previous lesson we done like writing out rhythms create our own rhythms i give them like uh, i i call it the rhythm scramble and i say okay you've got you got to do four lines and um you've got to use this and this and this these notes right and whatever combination you want great they go through um they do that and then i have my ipad and my ipad can mirror to the screen up in the front so i just take my camera and i hold it over someone's board and then that basically makes my ipad basically like a roving document camera so i like show that kid's work and then we get to read their work and then i go to another kid and i show their work and then we get to read that work it's only been like four or five minutes again this is something like we sort of did last year we sort of did in the previous lesson so it's really like application of that knowledge and then they get to share it and sort of quiz the rest of the class and then we learn Alabama Gal, which I'm sure I talked about in a previous lesson, but like, I don't think that this song is necessarily fifth grade material. Um, I think how you present a song really makes it work for whatever grade you want. But this is like a great reminder because they, uh, this is like the first sort of folk dance they've done since we've been back um, with singing and everything. And so, it, there, and actually the person who was at the school before me had taught it in like third grade. Great, but the kids like, they don't re really remember how it goes. <laughs> so I'm, it's like I'm teaching it, but I'm not really, because it's like they do remember like some things, but they're not great at it. So it's just a fun, like easy, like pick up and remember and go lesson um, because they like sort of get the process, but not completely. Then in the second lesson of the week, we do Alabama Miguel. We run through it. Uh, they We've finished it in the previous lesson. So there's like a run through practice try. Um, and then we do, we pull out the whiteboards. And this time I say, um, instead of just four lines of four beats each, you need to have four beats, a bar line, four more beats. Four beats, a bar line, four more beats. And they have to do so a total of two measures per line, four lines. So they have to do eight measures of stuff. And again, by the time they're done, I grab my, my iPad as a document camera and I come back and show it and kids get to read it. Cool. Okay. First grade. Um, I know I'm cycling back, so I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking about first grade. Um, kids come in. We did, we've already done BB, Bumblebee. We did it like a week and a half before. Um, so we just do it as like a refresher, like a quick run through lesson. They love it. It's an elimination. I talked about it, I think, two weeks ago. You can go back and see that if you want. We do Where is David? We sing through right, and we do the back and forth, just like I did in my kindergarten and my second grade. Same process, so I'm not going to talk about it because it's the same thing. Then I pull out this book, which I saw my friend Andrew Ellingson use years ago, and I thought it was so great. Um, it's the book Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? by Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carle. And um, it's a super fun book. And it, if you know Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? or Panda Bear, Panda Bear, What Do You See? It's very similar, I think. I don't know those books that well. I think. <laughs> but anyway, this is the one that I use every year. Um, and so it starts with Polar Bear, or I say, Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? This is not, this is not the media center. I can't just read it. I should probably sing this book, shouldn't I? Okay, I'm gonna sing. Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? And he says, I hear a lion roaring in my ear. A lot? Wait, hold on. Okay, I'm not a scientist or, or um, a, a 
biologist or an animal biologist, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that polar bears live in a different place than lions. Do polar bears live in a different place from lions, right? This book is confusing then if that's, I don't know how the, maybe the polar bear has like, like superhuman or superhero hearing. I don't know. I don't know how you hear a lion. Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I hear a lion roaring in my ear. Oh my goodness, there's a lion on the next page. He did hear it. That's so interesting. Hmm. Lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear a hippopotamus roaring in my ear. Hippopotamus? What even is that? Do you know what a hippopotamus is? Hippopotamus. Hippop hippopotam hippopotamus. What is that? Oh, it's a hippo. A hippo's full name must be hippopotamus. That's interesting because, okay, that makes sense. Hippopotamus sounds like hippo. Okay. That makes sense. So this is sort of the process I go through with kids where like on every page we suss out something about it. It's not just like straight read through, right, the first time. But I do sing every page. Hippo, hippo, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluting in my ear. Wait, the flamingo does not have a flute in its mouth. It says fluting. And we talk about, oh, well, dogs bark and owls hoot and cats meow. And uh, maybe we could say that a flamingo flutes. Yeah, you could say it sings, I guess. But fluting is a sort of a fun way to say it. So, so again, on each page, we're sort of coming up with, um, we're, it's more like critical thinking, giving more context on every page um, to, get, to, get, to make the story a little bit more exciting and intricate. This one's one of my favorite because he, the zebra hears a boa constrictor hissing in its ear. And not all the kids know what a boa constrictor is. And I say, so even if you don't know what a boa constrictor is, let's use our context clues here. It says that it's hissing. What animals hiss? Can you think of an animal or something that hisses? And so we go through and we talk about all the things that could hiss. Cats, kittens, snakes, some bugs. Um, what else could hiss? Humans, I guess. Right, and then we find out, yeah, a boa constrictor is a big snake. But don't worry, they don't live in Kansas, so it's you. You all don't have to worry because these book they don't they can't live in Kansas. Um, it's just too cold most of the year. Anyway, so then we go through, and we again every page is sung. Elephant, elephant, what do you hear? I hear a leopard roaring in my ear. Every page, when we talk a little bit, there's always something to talk about on each page. We finally get to walrus, walrus, and the walrus is near the peacock. And this is when I go, wait a minute, how in a how can a walrus be near a peacock? They do not live, I know they do not live in the same habitats. This cannot be right. How is this possible? And then I flip the page and I go, walrus, walrus, what do you hear? I hear a zookeeper whistling in my ear. So it's the zookeeper, right, who, and so then they're all in a zoo. Oh my goodness. And what does the zookeeper hear? He hears children who are dressed up like the animals. We can go through and be like, what's this one dressed as? What's this one dressed as? What's this one dressed as? And so again, this is just, it's not necessarily music content, but it's good content. It's especially good for your English language learners who like need, um, who need to see these different things, who need to um, get that connection. So then we go back through and I say, you know, this was so much fun, but I would actually like to do it again. And I'd like maybe your help on this. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, you get to sing to the animal and I'll tell you what they hear. So like you get to go polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? And then I'll go, I hear a lion roaring in my ear. And since you heard me say a lion, then you can ask lion, lion, what do you hear? And I'll tell you what the lion hears. I hear a hippo snorting in my ear and you get to go hippo, you know, so like I, I give them that demo for like the first two pages and then I let them run with it. Right. And so it's just fun. It's easy back and forth. Um, it's also me. Um, so it's again, reinforcing the interval. I want them to sing it here. Um, it's just fun content for them to do. It's great vocabulary and it's an easy book to, um, a, a sort of call and response sort of a form. It's easy for them to get that process and they love it. And if we have time, we've already learned hop old squirrel. So I pull out Skippy the, the squirrel. We get to talk about squirrels. You know, he's like, I heard you just did it. I 
heard you just did a book about an animal, and I would like to talk about squirrels instead. You know, or like, I don't know, whatever. So Skippy comes out, and then we we get to do the thing where instead of doing hop old squirrel, idle dum, idle dum, hop old squirrel, idle dum dee, hop old squirrel, idle dum, idle dum, hop old squirrel, idle dum dee. Then Skippy says, what else can we do? Well, we could, um, twist old squirrel, twist old squirrel, idle dum, idle dum. What else can we do? Mm. Wiggle. Okay, we could wiggle. Great. So then we, we spend any extra time that we have doing different things that Skippy the Squirrel could do. And then in the next lesson, ooh, and I have time to talk about it. In the next lesson, we do come in, we do a circle, we do a quick hop old squirrel, like maybe five minutes of that. Again, they've done it before. I'm not teaching the process. I'm just doing it again. And they're coming up with different things that we can do. Hop, skip, jump, slither, whatever we want to do. Um, these les lessons have all sort of been vaguely animal themed, so they have some ideas in their head already. Um, we do our where is so and so, like we've been doing the last couple times, and then I say, I've got a friend who you've not seen in a while, and he's very excited to come and teach you a, a story or teach you a song. Um, but he g does lose control of his emotions a little bit sometimes. So, like, I'm gonna just warn him, hey, Grizzly, yes. Do you want to come and see the first grader? Yes, I do. It's a sort, of, sort of the same process with kindergarten. And Grizzly comes out and he's very excited. And then Grizzly, um, they, so they, they remember Grizzly from the previous year where he shouts. And in this one, um, he gets to um, teach them the song uh, Grizzly Bear, oh Grizzly Bear. And so before we do that, we talk about like Skippy the Squirrel. When he came out and, t and met the kids and talked to the kids, he was talking about how he was hopping around the yard looking for food to store up for the winter and grizzly bears do store up food but in sort of a different way grizzly um squirrels they put their food in like a like a like their nest or a home or a hiding hole and where do you store your food i will tell you i store it here where do you store it right here in my mouth you store the food in your mouth for how long well no i eat it Oh, you eat the food. Oh, and then your body stores the food because it changes the food into fat, and that makes your body bigger, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I sleep. And we talk about hibernating. And this is cool because this sort of connects up with life science, things that they're familiar with. And so, again, it connects with Skippy in the previous lessons. It connects with things in their homeroom, um, things they've heard of before. And then we sing the song, which goes, Grizzly bear, oh, grizzly bear was sleeping in a cave. Please be very quiet, very, very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, he'll get very mad. And then he screams that and they all jump and so excited. But I had, I had warned them that he does lose control of his emotions sometimes. So they knew that was coming. But um, anyway, they, they love it. They think it's so hilarious. We learn the song line by line. Um, I take out the scream at the end when I teach it to them. So when I'm teaching it to them, I would go, if you wake him, if you shake him, he'll get very mad. And then once we learn it, then we add in the scream part. And then I say, oh my gosh, you know what? I got to put Grizzly away because I need to teach you the game. So come, come and make a circle. I sing my circle song. And um, then I say, okay, now they're all holding hands. They're standing up holding hands in a big circle. I say, okay, everyone raise up your hands. And I walk underneath two kids' hands and I sit in the middle. I go, I get to be Grizzly Bear. And I'm going to be asleep, and we're going to sing the song, and at the end, you're going to wake me up. I'm going to be very mad. So they sing through the song at the end. I, I'm, I wake up. I'm so mad. I go, ah, why did you wake me up? And I say, okay, now open up. Um, this time, at the end, you're going to lift up your arms, and you're going to make archways. And everybody's going to have a, basically a door. You're going to make a door on both sides of your body um, so that I, I, Grizzly, can get out of the cave. So we sing through again. At the end, I go out through one of the doors and I say, okay. And so I go in through an archway say, every other archway closes except this one. And the, so they do that and I, and then I run around the circle, rah, 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 who woke me up, who woke me up? And I go all the way around and then back in through the archway. So I say, so when I come out through the archway, every other archway has to close except this one. And I'm going to run around and be so angry. And then I'm going to go back in. Great. So then we do it all process one time through. Um, it's not a very long song, so it takes 20 seconds, 30 seconds to do that whole thing. But we sort of scaffold it in through that process, like one thing at a time, so they know what's coming, they know what's coming, we build on, we build on, we build on. Um, and then I say, great, I need someone else to be grizzly, and I choose someone else to do the same exact thing. We do the same song, the kid wakes up at the end, he runs through an archway, any archway that they want, every other archway closes, that kid runs around, growls, and then goes back in. And I say, great, perfect. And so like, all of this, again, is scaffolding 
up to the game. I see, I remember in the last lesson we did that book about a different kind of bear, a polar bear. Yeah, well, you know what? I am going to play one of the characters in that story. We've already got a grizzly bear, and now I get to play the zookeeper. And you know what I need at my zoo? I need a grizzly bear exhibit. We don't have one yet. So I'm out here to try and capture a grizzly bear. So here's what's going to happen. At the end of the song, we're going to sing the song like normal. At the end of the song, our grizzly bear is going to wake up and be so frustrated somebody woke him up from his hibernation. And, and he's going to run out one of the arches and run around. But I am going to be waiting outside on the mountain hoping to find a grizzly bear. So if you, and then there's that one kid in the middle of the circle who's the bear, right? And I go, so Jalen or Alex or... Um, Amari or whatever, whoever's in there. I say, so Amari, if you're the grizzly bear and I am the zookeeper and I want to catch you, do you think you should go out and I point to the closest arch? Do you think you should go to this arch and run through this arch? And they're like, no. I'm like, yeah, because I would just get, get you right away, right? Do you think you should go to this arch, like the second one down? No, I shouldn't do that because you'd catch me. Right. You're going to want to choose an archway that's on the far on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. And so then we like we go through the song, we process it. I chase around and try and catch the kid. I can't catch him. I could catch him, but I don't catch them. And I let them go all the way around and back through the archway. And then I say, "Great, okay, grizzly, choose a new grizzly, and I'm going to choose a new zookeeper." I did this game years ago where I tried to explain like multiple things at once instead of like living and processing through each one slowly at a time, and. It was never successful. I could never get it done. And this way, the first time I taught it this way where like I did each little step and like did it all the way through for each step, it felt agonizingly slow because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like doing every, I'm doing every part. I'm doing the part where I get to play the grizzly. I do the part where I go under the arch. I do the part, uh, uh, sing so long. But what I found was that kids understood the game and the process so much faster where is in previous years when I would just like teach the whole thing and like try and explain the game I had to go back and re-explain and re-explain and re-explain scaffolding it like this where like they experience every part along the way works better in the long run if that makes sense and then we play the grizzly bear game in the next lesson guess what we're going to come back and play it again because they love that game Okay, that's all of my lessons. I saw a couple quick questions. Barbara asked, is there an app for your iPad that turns it into a document camera? No, but if I have my iPad and I am mirroring through AirPlay, which I'm able to do because I have an Apple TV, I mirror up to the, like, so it's projected up on the screen. If I just turn on the camera app, then whatever the camera is currently looking at will show up on the screen. So it basically turns the iPad into a document camera because it's already mirrored and then whatever I'm looking at, whatever's underneath the viewfinder shows up on the screen, if that makes sense. Um, so it's really not a document camera, and it only really works if you have the iPad and the Apple TV where you can mirror your display so that what you see on the iPad shows up on the screen. <clears throat> but if I have my camera open and what I see is the ground below me, then that's what's going to show up on the, on the board. I hope that makes sense. Okay, that's all for today. I hope if you're in the Chicago area, I will see you this weekend at um, the Greater Chicago Orf Chapter Workshop, and that is in Morton Grove, Illinois. That's this Saturday morning from 9 to 1. Next weekend, if you're in St. Louis, I hope I'll see you there at Ellisville Elementary with the uh, St. Louis Orf Chapter. If you're the following weekend, if you're in Milwaukee area, I hope I'll see you at a, a Meadowview Elementary in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. But anyway, if nothing else, I hope I'll see you next Monday for another Musical Mondays live video. Thanks, everyone, for coming along tonight, and have a great week. Bye, everyone.